Okay guys, so hopefully you enjoy the nice bright background and my lovely breath. <coughs> so today, before we get into this as always, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan survival and EDC awesomeness like this. It's extremely bright. <laughs> So anyways, today in our particular video, I'm going to be talking about the three pieces of survival gear that I put in every single one of my survival kits or just builds, just for survival. And you guys will probably notice if you guys have been watching some of my survival kits, EDC survival, um, definitely my bushcrafting kits and all that stuff, you'll notice a kind of continuing trend that in some kits I carry, you know, this and that, and in other kits I carry other things but there's always a rudimentary set of tools that is in every single kit and today I wanted to talk about the three things that are in pretty much every single survival kit I make except maybe an Altoids or a pill bottle where they're just so tiny they can't necessarily accommodate um, things like this Mylar but a set with the side of very few like with very few with the exception of very few survival kits that are very small like micro survival kits this is basically the selection of things the few things that i have in every single kit regardless <coughs> so so without any further ado let's now actually take a look at the top three things now i just brought these out as examples of the different items it's not that i necessarily carry a gob spark armageddon in every single pack or that I carry this particular mylar blanket in every single pack, or this big spool of paracord. It's just simply that this is a representation of all the three different things. So starting off with my number one tool, or the number one thing that I make sure that is in every single, and this is every single survival kit without fail, has this piece of gear in it. And like I said, it's not this exact one, but every single piece of kit I have has a ferrocerium rod in it. Every survival kit, and actually even my everyday carry, like what's on my body, I always make sure I have a ferrocerium rod on me. And the primary reason is because I do carry a Zippo, and I do like my Zippo for survival tasks, but for me, what I saw was too many times my Zippo would be unreliable, and like it might run out of fuel, you might not know, you know, like the integrity of it. So I decided to just stop with that whole guesswork and the possibility of it working and just go over to a hard unit that I know will always work regardless. Now this is a gob spark and I'll show you guys some quickly just some use of it just so you guys can kind of see. That's to kind of be sparked off here. But you guys can see there, it does a pretty good job. So just some fun, just kind of playing around with the gob spark. And this is, of course, a Gobspark Armageddon. I do carry this in my backpack. Actually, most of this stuff is all from backpack equipment. But uh, <laughs> just to show you the illustration, this is a, uh, this is a, what is it? Uh, who makes this thing? Um, <coughs> I cannot remember the name of the company, but Gobspark, this is the Armageddon by Gobspark. And I know Gobspark is by, like, ferrorods.com or something like that. I'm so messing up their name, but I've gotten ferro rods from this company before back when I was doing my SWC Bushcrafter. I really like the quality of their ferro rods, and this is the same company that makes the Gobspark Armageddons, and I really wanted to try it out. So anyways, this in particular is a Gobspark, uh, but like I said, I want to make sure, and I try to make sure that Regardless to whether it's a gob spark or whether it's, you know, an Exotac Nano Striker XL or whatever it is, I try and always make sure that I have a good, reliable, solid ferro rod on me. So the next thing that I carry in almost every one of my packs, except for when it gets a little bit too small, and I usually use other nylon cordages, but for the most part, I use um, paracord everywhere. And paracord is basically like the duct tape of the cordage world. It's the most multi-use, multifaceted piece of cordage that you can possibly carry. You know that basically it's going to be able to handle and do whatever you need it to do. Plus it has the seven inner strands that you can take out and use as extra cordage for doing different tasks. So I really love paracord, and of course this is on a big spool, it's like 50 feet of it, but usually I carry it in significantly smaller amounts. This is actually for my backpack, so and on my backpack I run a lot of paracord, but 
but basically paracord regardless to whether it's in a big quantity like this or if it's just a handful of feet I'm always running paracord because it is a really great uh, cordage and then lastly and once again the only reason this is lastly this is usually higher up on my list of importance of things to carry but I can't carry mylar blankets in every single thing I run so <laughs> so yeah this is basically why this is last is because it's not in every single uh, it's not in every single survival kit I run, but it is a Mylar blanket. And actually I do like this one because it has a plastic protective covering. And you guys, if you guys have worked with thinner uh, or even really even thicker Mylar blankets, they all are pretty thin and easy to tear and rip up. And so I actually really like this little protective covering over it to help keep it safe and damage free while it's in its, just like while it's sitting in a backpack. But anyways, nonetheless, this is just a Mylar survival blanket and or Mylar space blanket, whatever you want to call it. And that is definitely in every single pack or every single kit that I make that's large enough to hold a Mylar blanket, I definitely carry it. And you guys will notice like in my personal survival kit, my really decked out personal survival kit, I make sure to have a Mylar blanket in there because of if I need to, if I'm trapped out in the woods or I need to set up shelter in the winter, it's gonna be really fast and it's easier with a Mylar blanket. Anyways guys, this has been a little bit of a shorter video, but hopefully you've enjoyed this and kind of seen the top three things that I make sure I always have. These are three of the top C's of survivability. The other two are cutlery and container, but oftentimes I usually have cutlery on my body or somewhere within ease of access. So I don't always put it in every single survival kit, but it is pretty high up there. And then of course containers, I can usually find a container and, you know, make do with something. If worst case scenario, you could also retrofit a Mylar blanket into a container because it is also watertight. Uh, as long as there's not like any holes poked in it. <laughs> so anyways, uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this and as always, God bless and I'm out.